Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, this is Josh with Jackson Metal right here again today with H&H uh, &H Construction. Today we're going to be doing a uh, auger video. It's going to show the auger, a little bit of the square out here. And we're going to just be showing what's going on when we're augering in the ground, how deep it's going, how to do this. Uh, we've done a video, a couple of videos already, but we've got a lot of comments of people saying, hey, on the Understanding the Pier Foundation, we would really like to see a real world application of what's going on out there on site. So if you're like me, I'm really visual. So I like to be able to just come and see it for myself, see, you know, see what's going on, how it's happening, when it's happening. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you, he's got the box squared out out here. We're gonna show you some augering, how to pack it in, how to pass inspection, what you're gonna actually need to do in order to do this thing right. And then we're actually gonna cut back to the uh, engineer drawing and show you how it pertains to what's happening in the field. So let's check it out, guys. Hey guys, so we're back right here. Here's what we got going. So he's already augered a hole here. And right here behind me, you can see what we've done is we went on and blown up the engineer drawing so that you guys can see what it is you're looking at when you get one of these drawings right here and what it's actually gonna mean in the field. So if you look right here, you're gonna see this is gonna be the actual pier foundation. It shows the post coming down in here. And it's showing an 18 by 36 inch foundation or pier hole filled with 3,500 PSI concrete. So that's gonna be the concrete all the way around it, all the way up to the top of the grade, all the way back down 18 by 36. So if we look right here at this pier hole right here, you can see that we've augered this pier hole He's a little deeper than 36. He might be about 37 inches. I don't think the inspector's gonna mind if we do anything like that. That's perfectly fine. Um, and this thing's gonna be 18 inches around. So I'm gonna show you guys something right quick. So what's gonna happen when the inspector comes out to inspect this hole, he's actually gonna bring a probing rod. I've seen different probing rods. Some probing rod they're just gonna lean on. I've actually seen some with a deflection meter on them. So they have a certain recommended deflection that they're gonna allow to say it's packed in all the way. So I'm just gonna grab this packer right here and show you. <clears throat> so this right here, typical tamper. It actually helps lots of times if you go on ahead and maybe get an extended rod put on yours so you don't have to bend over as much. But um, the one that we have here today, <clears throat> It's gonna be like that. And what you're gonna wanna do, guys, is you're just gonna take this and you're gonna pack it around. Do it, I would say, eight, nine, 10 times really good. You wanna hear that hollow sound that you're hearing right there. That gives you a pretty good indication that you're packed in pretty solid right there. That way, when the inspector comes out, you're gonna be able to pass your inspection the first time, and it's not gonna be a situation where he's gonna fail you, and you're gonna have to come back out and redo this thing. So this right here is, is what you're gonna be looking for. Um, as you can see also, we've all, he's already got his string set up. We're gonna talk about the square here in a second once he gets done. We're gonna go back over the square and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a step-by-step -step on how to square out yours as well so that you guys can do it at home or wherever it is you're trying to do.
Okay guys, so what we got going here, we're gonna talk a little bit about the square. One of the first things you gotta do is identify at least one wall, whether it's a front, a back, side, whatever it is. So the homeowner is expressed in this situation, she was most important wanting this side wall here because it's gonna be against her garden type area, whatever, next to her house. This is gonna be a little carport type shop situation where she can just park under, walk right in. So the first thing we did is we got this wall right here lined out how she wanted it in the back corner. From there, we're gonna, we squared out the rest of the building. So what we have going right here is, this is gonna be the very side wall and back corner stake right here. You notice that the string extends past these stakes on each end. The reason for that is when they auger the hole here, they don't wanna lose their square. So they actually go further than the 24 foot that this building is on both sides. That way they can auger the hole and still keep these stakes. Some people are gonna use batter boards or whatever, but because this one's not getting a concrete slab and it's actually working over an existing asphalt driveway, there was no reason to actually go with full on batter boards and everything like that. We'll just drive the stakes and they'll keep those. So they came from here along this sidewall that was indicated by the customer it went up 24 foot. We developed one line. From there, they measured over 24 foot across and got a parallel line to this line, okay? So you got now one sidewall, the back corner stake, on this line, 24 foot to that stake. They've set a parallel line across 24 foot over. So now it's time to identify making this building square. Just because you got two parallel lines does not mean that your building is square. The building could be off either way, like that. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna see Brandon with H&H &H Construction up here. He's gonna pull his diagonal. So when you buy a kit or whatever from Jackson Metal, you're gonna get a drawing. That drawing is gonna show a foundational. That foundational is gonna have a diagonal line on it. For any of you math whizzes out there, I know you're sitting there right now saying it's just Pythagorean theorem. You're right, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's all that's happening here. So what he's done is he's taken and went from the front corner and he's identified his diagonal over here. That sets the other corner for this building right here. So he now knows this building is square where these two lines are gonna intersect. So we come to this parallel line over here and this building right here you can see right here, he's hit his diagonal right here in the corner. This, right, this line right here is gonna make this building squared out. You can see we've already previously done it. We've augered a couple holes. The inspector came out, he wanted to see us in action or whatever, so we had to go ahead and move forward in the process. We're just gonna back up for you guys at home so that you can see what, what's happening, how we're doing it. So even once we do this one, we also will then go from that corner and come back up and get a quick double check so that we can just verify this building is 100% square. If your building is not square, you're gonna have all kind of troubles as you try to install this building down the road. Things are not gonna fit. Things are not gonna work right. You're gonna wonder what's happening. The foundation was out. You don't have a strong foundation. You don't have a strong building. Okay That's guys, so now at this point, we've all got all the holes out here. So everything's ready. Uh, he's going back to see about getting the concrete mixer. He's gonna come back, fill these holes. Uh, this customer is elected to do the uh, no brock post system. So he's gonna be setting the brackets and the concrete here and everything's ready to go. The strings he has down right now. Just one more tip, when you're doing this, if you're pulling strings and you're gonna put marks on your strings or whatever, make sure that you don't mark those strings or the marks where your posts are gonna be going until after you've augered your holes and everything's set. The reason being those strings will stretch. And if you pre-mark that, then you untime the auger, put them back on or whatever, your strings will be stretched. And next thing you know, you're out of square or your poster are in the wrong positions or something like that. So we'll be back in just a little bit with the concrete mixer. I think H&H &H is going to get that. We're gonna meet them back out here. We're gonna go on ahead and pour the concrete, set the brackets. We're gonna check that out. We'll talk about that as that goes on. So we're Thank back you. now. We've got all the holes augered out. We went over the square earlier. We showed you the augering on everything, showed you how you pack it in. We've had our inspection out. The inspector's been out. He's given us the approval on it and everything. He's approved the holes. So now we're getting ready to go ahead on and start putting the concrete. We're gonna set the bracket. So I'm taking the liberty of bringing out the engineer's drawing today just with a blow up of it. 
Um, I've showed you this guys a little bit before on the understanding your foundation. This video is actually going to be a continuation, going to be part two of that video. A lot of people said they wanted to see a real world application of what's actually happening in the field, not just us showing them that foundation. So you want it, you got it, here we are. You can see these guys have brought their concrete mixer out today. That concrete mixer right there, I think it might be capable of making two yards of concrete at a time. Save these guys a lot of money from getting short haul from calling the concrete company. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is this is the no rock post system. These brackets right here, this is what's gonna go in the ground so that there's actually no wood below grade going in the ground here. Another thing is just, I wanted to speak to the, the we hear a lot of people saying, I've been quoted a, a bag of sacrete per post or a bag of sacrete per hole or whatever like that. You can obviously see that does not typically match up. I have never seen a drawing that that's gonna match up to where it just shows one bag of sacrete per post to fill the rest of the way with dirt. That gives you dirt all around your post. It's interacting with the pressure treat on the post and everything. That right there is just not gonna last you very long. You're gonna to want to make sure that these guys are filling your hole all the way up with pre-mixed concrete so that you're reaching the proper PSI. A lot of these guys have figured out there's a little bit of a loophole in the inspection process. So what happens is the inspector comes out and he inspects this hole and he'll probe the bottom, but he's not, after the build is built, will be the next inspection. He's not gonna come out and check that foundation again. So it's gonna be up to you, the consumer, or the contractor, whichever one you are in the case, to make sure that you're actually getting the foundation that's called for on the drawing. So if you don't watch, a lot of these guys will just put a bag or two of sacrete, fill the rest of the way with dirt, call it good. You're not even meeting up to the drawing that's being spec. So just something to watch out for there. But other than that, we're about to get started. Uh, H&H is about to go on ahead and start pulling, pouring these foundations, pouring these pier holes. We're gonna watch that, we're gonna video that, and then we're gonna show you the actual bracket set and how all that works. So that you can do it yourself at home, or if you're a contractor, if you're trying to learn how to do it or whatever, we're gonna help you any way we can. Thanks guys. We're gonna go on ahead and film one of these. They're gonna be coming out of this uh, concrete mixer we was looking at a second ago. Jumping into the wheelbarrow just so that they can make sure they're not making a mess. This customer obviously has an asphalt driveway, so they want to be as neat and as clean as they can out here. We're just gonna watch one of these dumps. Come check it out. Man, that thing's super awesome right there. It just mixes up the concrete. They actually meter the water going in there, so they have calculated by the scoop how much sand, gravel, and Portland they need. Then they got a water meter so they can verify they're hitting the proper PSI. That way they're matching up to the engineer drawing on this thing. Super cool. So now what he's doing is he's pulling his tape out. We're gonna hit the string now 
and now is when he actually gonna make his marks on there. Reason being, if he would have pulled the strings beforehand, if he would have went on and marked it when he had them already pulled, once he had to take them away and auger, put the concrete in and everything, if he would have re, if he wouldn't have remarked it, it's possible the string would have stretched or he wouldn't have tied it the same way or something would have been off on a square or whatnot. So now he's just gonna go back through, he's gonna hit all his marks. As you can see, everything's filled. The concrete holes have been filled all the way to the top. He's done took the opportunity and he went on to smooth this out so it makes a nice, clean, smooth finish, especially in this situation right here, so you don't just have a lot of rocky gravel, not giving it as pleasing aesthetic to it. So we're gonna watch that. Here in a second, we're gonna get ready and we're gonna go on and set the brackets. So we'll right, check we're ready out. to set the brackets down. Best part of the job it means it's almost near the end. So um, we're gonna take a look right here. We're gonna watch as he does it. So what he's gonna do right here, guys, he's actually setting this up you're gonna set it the same way you would actually do a post. So if you were setting a post in ground, you was running your string, you are putting your bracket right along the edge of that post with your mark. The same way he's gonna do this, he's just gonna take a smaller level. He's gonna be plumbing this bracket both ways. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's 100% it's plumb because if it's not, it's gonna to wanna to alter the way your post is gonna stand up. So just take a look, you can see what he's got going on so that you guys can See how you're gonna to wanna to do it if you're setting these yourself. The concrete's all the way to the top. That's the, one of the reasons he went on and did a nice smooth finish on here. Not only for aesthetics, but that gives him a good solid base to rest that bracket on. The other thing guys, you cannot set these brackets with this concrete too wet. You've gotta give it just a little bit for that concrete to start to tighten up and lock up. If you try to do it as soon as you pour the concrete, that bracket's just gonna to wanna to start sinking because this bracket is heavy. It's metal, it's heavy, and it does set in the concrete while it's wet. There's a certain window of time that you got once that concrete is set. It depends on the temperature outside, the mix of the concrete, whether or not there's calcium in it or anything like that. So there's a certain window of time. You're just gonna have to test it, make sure once it brackets, you're able to set one, you need to go on with the whole project because it's time for it to happen. So that's it. Uh, they've set all the brackets here. Everything's done. All the brackets are set. They've been plumbed up, squared, string. Everything's ready to go. As you can see, back here in the background, we got three on one side. There's two on the other side. They're actually gonna put a header truss across that right there. They didn't want one in the wall place so they come in. So this one right here, I think they're gonna call it a wrap to get on out of here. If you got any more questions on this right here, just let me know. JacksonMetalRoof.com.